Hey, my name is Stephanie and today I am going to be sharing with you some tips for Bible study. So this is kind of more how I do Bible study, but I think there's some do's and don'ts I can share with you as well that I see a lot of people doing when they're kind of new to it. So one of the things that I do is I consider something that I've been wondering about. So sometimes we'll hear something or we'll run across a concept or an idea that might stick in your mind a little bit. And for me, I like to decide to, you know, look up, I mean, we have the internet, right? So you can even look up verses to do with that situation. Now, something I want you to be careful of is to not just take, you know, whatever this blog post says as the answer to your question, but to see what scripture references they use a, if they even make sense to what they're talking about, and B, if you can find more scriptures to do with it. The idea here is to be able to search for the answer to whatever you're wondering about, so it can kind of drive you to continue looking, and also to help you find kind of the biblical structure to that issue, instead of just someone's one-off, oh, I use the scripture and this is how it is, but to see it as a whole, because there's a lot of things Christians disagree on, and they have scripture they reference for those things. So that's going to bring me to tip number two when it comes to Bible study, and that is to look in the Greek and the Hebrew. Now, if you're like me, you might not be a scholar who is fluent in Greek and Hebrew. So what I do is I go to blueletterbible.org and it will let me go to their concordance and everything to see what those words there mean in that context. So as you're looking through, say you're using the KJV or something and you see Matthew 1-1 and you open that and then you can click on I think it's a interlinear, and then it'll open what each word and its concordance number are, and then you can click that, and you can see what that word really means in a direct translation from either Greek or Hebrew, whatever it was written in. That way you're not relying solely on a certain translation of the Bible or someone's opinions about what it means, or maybe even your concept of the word used there but to actually look into it and see what it really means can really help you understand what the Bible is saying, especially in areas that are kind of confusing. Another thing, if you're not really thinking, wow, there's something I really wanna think about today or really wanna search out today, you can always use a guided plan that helps you go through the Bible. And a lot of times those will bring up issues like, huh, I, I don't remember seeing this in here or that's an interesting thing. I, I don't remember reading that or I don't remember hearing about that. So you can look deeper into those things, even if you're using a guided plan. Now again, if you're using a guided plan, just be aware that the person writing that guided plan is not God himself, okay? So they might be drawing something from it that is scriptural and is biblical and makes sense, and sometimes people don't make a whole lot of sense, or they have a kind of a weird take on things. So again, for your own self, look into it. Not only are, you know, your study that is guided maybe has some personal influence, but also be careful of some notes that are put in some versions of Bibles where people kind of give their opinion of what things mean or what things are. I've seen some situations where the Bible it has like footnotes and stuff like that, or margin notes, where people are basically saying, yeah, they had the, had the tongues or they had the Holy Spirit, but we don't do that. What? Just be wary of that kind of thing. Again, always look to the scripture in depth. Don't just stop there. And you don't have to be a scholar. Just go to something like Blue Letter Bible and just kind of click around and see what you can find out the actual inner meaning of things in context. And for the person who is new to even touching the Bible, I would not suggest you start in Genesis <laughs> because it can really be easy to kind of like be like, eh, okay, this is gonna be really boring. So a lot of the early books, if you're very new to reading the Bible, aren't exactly the best place to start. I mean, sure, you can see, you know, God made the world and the earth and all the things inside of it and all of that, and that's great. But there can be a lot of so-and-so begets so-and-so, and so-and-so -so begets so-and-so, and you know, those sorts of things that come along that aren't really helpful <laughs> uh, to the undiscerning eye. So definitely the New Testament um, can be helpful 
a place to start. And then again, you can always look up like devotionals and study guides and stuff like that. And if anyone's ever bored with their life and wants me to do something like that, I'm open to the idea. Not promising anything though. And my last tip to you with Bible study is prayer first. So something that someone taught me about this is to even take some time to set everything aside and no distractions or anything and just sit there and pray in the Holy Spirit. And if you don't know how to do that yet, just, you know, think on the Lord and be quiet and silent. And sometimes you might be actually directed to certain passages in scripture and you can kind of expand from there. I've been led to certain passages of scripture that were very particular to me that I didn't know the reference for. I didn't even know some of these things existed in the Bible. And it was there after I was in prayer and I heard to go to there or even sometimes just open the Bible and there it was. So. I definitely encourage prayer because when you're in the spirit, the spirit can help you through the word and understanding because they go together. The word and the spirit go together. What is the spirit behind the word? So it's always important to pray in addition to having the word because just the letter of the law isn't going to be that helpful. If we, if you've ever tried to sit down and just read the Bible and haven't prayed and you're just like, oh, I gotta read it. Today I'm supposed to do it. You know, I've, you know, made this resolution. I'm gonna read it every day or something. And you sit down and you open it and you're like, and this is the story I heard and blah, blah, blah. Okay, hey, thanks for this, blah, blah, whatever. You don't see anything in it. But sometimes when you're in the spirit and you're reading the Bible, it's all of a sudden, even something you've read a million times, it almost is like it has a new message to you. It almost seems to have a new application to your life. So I encourage you to go ahead and try. I know it's not always easy. I know sometimes it can be hard to want to sit down and set time aside for something that's very thick and sometimes confusing, especially depending on, on what version you have. But I definitely encourage you to take the time to, to try and do that, to see what it really means in the Hebrew and the Greek, and to take that into context and look up other scriptures that have to do with that. That way it's more interesting to you instead of someone telling you, okay, read Genesis 1 today, read Genesis 2, stuff like that. So that's just kind of how I approach when I go into Bible study. That's just how I approach it. So I thought this might help you guys. Some of you have asked me about it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you have any more tips for people on Bible study and such like that, let them know. I'm sure that would be a great community resource for everyone. If you're not subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I post to this channel every Saturday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time and I hope you're having a wonderful week. Bye!